This is a quick demonstration and technology preview of EMC Symmetrix VMAX using VMware vSphere vVols. vVols are a new way of presenting storage and managing virtual machine storage. It starts with an idea of something called a protocol endpoint or an IOD multiplexer. Notice that this is a single small device and the protocol endpoint really has no usable capacity. You can think of this as kind of the IO uh, uh, path to the storage rather than a data store. And you'll notice that we're starting off with no uh, shared data stores what, whatsoever. Now this is a technology preview uh, using pre-release code from uh, VMware and from EMC. And uh, we're going to be showing some detail here at uh, you know a detailed level via the CLI. Later on we'll show you what this looks like in the UI. Uh, using the VASA provider, um, and this is something that will be available on all EMC platforms, here we're using the uh, VMAX example, um, is the way that uh, 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 vSphere, vVol, and communication to the underlying storage array uh, about capabilities are communicated. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, load all of the available storage containers. A storage container is a new idea in the vVol uh, world which is not a LUN, it's a, uh, uh, the analogy is really like a storage pool. It's a thing that uh, is an aggregate set of capabilities, uh, IOPS and gigabytes and, and data services that the storage array can provide. Um, so now if we go back into vSphere, and again this is a tech preview, so obviously this is using the older VI client look and feel as opposed to the FlexBase client, you can see that that uh, uh, storage container has now been loaded. Now if we go in and from now on when we create uh, virtual machines, when we go through and, and go through the provisioning dialog, you're never asked to select a data store. Now this is an evolution of the idea of uh, storage DRS uh, um, uh, data store clusters. Um, in, in this case, you can think of the first attempt at, at trying to create uh, VM level policy and granularity was to work around the inherent idea of LUNs and file systems that create data stores. But here you'll notice that you don't need to uh, do anything, you just basically select the uh, uh, storage capacity pool and off you go. Um, one thing that is uh, very interesting is that the data store pool can provide a rich set of uh, capabilities, either quality of service options or data services like uh, snapshot uh, retention policies and those sorts of things, not at the data store level, but rather what services could be applied for an individual virtual machine. Really cool idea around true VM granularity. Now, the other thing that we're calling out through the process here is that this doesn't create a fundamental change in how you provision VMs, which is nice, which means it will work with everything. And by the way, as you browse storage containers, which remember are not a LUN uh, or a file system, uh, you can actually see that it kind of looks like the previous idea. Now why is this important? It means that, uh, and by the way, here we're going to continue through and, and load some operating systems on it so you can see that these things function as if they were you know, a normal VM sitting on a data store. Data stores have got a series of, of challenges historically. Number one, you need to create a, a relatively large number of data stores where if you scale up to n number of virtual machines, you'd need m number of, uh, uh, of data store units, right? Um, you know, and, and obviously for, our, for our larger uh, VMware and EMC customers, and there are customers that have got many, many thousands of VMs and service providers with, with hundreds of thousands of VMs, this creates a, a, a management and scaling problem uh, to some degree with block devices, to another degree with NAS devices, but inherently with both, the idea of a data store is kind of a clunky construct. Um, the second thing is that, uh, um, uh, you know, managing the protocol endpoint is simpler at scale because you can really harden that device whether again it's presented as file or whether it's presented as block storage. Now notice that all again, you know, all the stuff that we're doing here, we're installing uh, traditional operating systems the way that we normally would. You can add and you can expand storage. So in other words, the core use cases don't change. Now one thing that's important to call out here that is materially different is uh, EMC arrays for a while now have been able to sort of fake this in a sense. In other words, their management UIs would integrate with vCenter. And um, for NAS devices, we were able to snapshot and replicate and manage performance, for example, on a file level basis. Um, and there's other things out there that uh, could do something similar. NetApp could do something similar on NAS devices. 
uh, uh, Tintree could do similar things. Uh, so this idea that we're all striving towards to get towards VM object level granularity, uh, you can kind of fake it on NAS devices today, but VVOLs are materially different. The, the first thing is, is that all of those other models still have got this core construct of, of, of data stores sitting there underneath the covers. Uh, you're you know using NFS based data stores or using VMFS based data stores. And then the second thing is that the storage arrays don't really understand the core construct of what is the VM. If it's a file, you can kind of work through it. VVOLS takes that to a dramatically different level because not only are you operating on VM levels of granularity, and here you can see we're loading and unloading uh, uh, the VVOL containers, so this is basically going through a wide variety of the possible use cases. But other things that are, are possible and we've demonstrated uh, in different use cases is, for example, you can do true VM level replicas. Uh, you could take storage capabilities and apply them to just VM levels of granularity, any storage data service. The example that we've shown at VMworld 2012 on that example is, uh, for example, switching VPlex behavior from async to sync uh, on an individual virtual machine basis, on an individual VVOL basis. So here again, we're we're showing an example of where we're uh, unloading uh, the storage container. Uh, again, this is this uh, early engineering prototypes uh, have richer capabilities here in the VMAX implementation uh, via the CLI. Later on, I'll show you what this looks like in the UI. But the point here is that all of these use cases we've already got within our uh, prototype builds, working together and uh, going through these various functions. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is uh, we'll show you, for example, what it looks like when you query the protocol endpoint um, using the uh, programmatic API on, on the SIM. Uh, you can see all sorts of details about how VVOLs are being used. And again, this is one thing that will also impact the storage administrator's world in a big way, which is, um, you know, that notice here it's saying, hey, look, for this particular uh, uh, device, it's a protocol endpoint device, and there's no VVOLs that are currently bound to it. After we go through and create those VMs and we issue those so same commands, you know, you, you'll see all of the VVOLs that are bound to the protocol endpoint. The, again, the reason that this is important is that this means that the storage administrator is increasingly going to move into the world of managing large-scale storage containers and policies and have visibility about what uh, VVOLs, in other words, what virtual machines are bound to those without having this construct of LUNs or file systems in the middle. And again, here we're showing this in a block example uh, that we already have this working on uh, VNX file as an example as well, uh, which we've shown in a VNXE example at uh, VMworld 2012 as well. So here uh, we can go and we can uh, see that there's a couple of devices that are assigned. Here you can see that there's 10 VVOLs that are, that are bound to this uh, protocol endpoint. Um, and one thing that's kind of cool is that VVOLs are often thought of as being VM level granular. They're actually even more granular than that. You can see that we have VVOLs that were set aside for swap, for config, and for uh, VMDK storage. So uh, if we go in and we say, hey, let's uh, query an individual VVOL, again, what's cool here is, is that we're now able to get down to VM level granular everything, right? Um, and uh, you can start to imagine how this would apply to um, any sort of capability that we could do at the uh, array UI. This is also here now just to give you a quick preview of what this would look like in the UI. So EMC Unisphere is the uh, flex-based UI that we use across the EMC portfolio. Simple, easy, and actually shares a common, lot of common kind of look and feel with uh, the uh, vSphere flex-based UI. As we go down to volumes, uh, obviously people are going to operate in a world where uh, they're going to be using VVOLs, you know, and transition towards that model over time in vSphere environments. But of course, customers are going to have all sorts of heterogeneous environments. As we go down and we take a look at virtual volumes, uh, we can see here that uh, you know uh, this is the list of thin devices that we have. Uh, you can see that uh, we're using a very large number of uh, uh, thin devices by capacity. And if we go into that list, you know there might be some traditional volumes that are being used for all sorts of different hosts um, and, and things that aren't running on vSphere, but uh, already you can see that we've got new VVOL and protocol endpoint devices shown there as well, which is cool. Pretty awesome stuff and shows how VMware and EMC are working together to define the future of storage.